open source AI models is a key building block for AI and basic research today. Um, a lot of AI models are accessible only behind a proprietary web interface where you can call someone else's proprietary model and get a response back. And that makes it a black box. It's much harder for many teams to study or to use in certain ways. In contrast, the teams releasing open models, open ways to open source models that anyone can download and customize and use to innovate and build new applications on top of or to do academic studies on top of. So this is a really precious, really important component of how AI innovates. I've been surprised at the intensity of the lobbying to stifle open source space innovations. Uh, I think a few companies had invested very large amounts of money into training proprietary AI models. And understandably, it's annoying if someone else open sources a model that degrades the value of that investment. And so over the last year, with lines of attack such as AI could kill us all or, or AI you know, on various safety grounds I don't think really relate to the real risk of AI, there have been many lines of attack to try to put in place really burdensome registry requirements or licensing requirements or reporting requirements on open source software that if enacted candidly would shut down a lot of innovation and damage competition. One of the ways to prevent the choke point of uh, AI models you know, stifling innovation is open source because once something is open source, anyone can use it and that really promotes competition. And I feel like um, a lot of intense lobbying effort, uh, unfortunately, which some regulators uh, internationally as well have taken seriously, would be very anti-competitive and really shut down small startups to, to, to favor the big tech companies that can deal with these complex compliance requirements. I've been, I, I, I've been speaking to some governments, some of which are considering um, having their own procurement processes favor open source. Uh, and I think that would be a very positive thing to promote openness and promote open source. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, um, I would be quite happy if government doesn't even promote open source, but just doesn't actively stifle it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm seeing awful proposals for regulation. For example, here in California, the proposed SB 1047 would put in place really impossible, to my mind, safety requirements um, where the only rational response for a lot of teams would be to start releasing open source. One of the tricky things to understand about AI is it's a general purpose technology useful for many different applications, uh, kind of like electricity or maybe like an electric motor. An electric motor can be used to build a blender or electrical vehicle or a dialysis machine or to build a smart bomb. And if you were to go to an electric motor maker and say, can you guarantee that your electric motor won't ever be used for a nefarious purpose, like someone building a smart bomb with it, then there is no way for the electric motor maker to guarantee that. And the only thing they could do is make electric motors so tiny to be useful for, for anything, and we lose the blend and electrical vehicle and dialysis machine. We're seeing this now in AI. AI is a general purpose technology with tons of beneficial use cases in healthcare and financial services and so on, and education and so on. And I'm seeing proposals to say, can you guarantee your AI will never be used by anyone for any negative purpose? And that's actually not possible because safety is not a function of the electric motor or of the AI technology, it's a function of the application. So I think governments have an important role to play to regulate the applications because uh, we do want electrical vehicles to be safe. We do want dialysis machines to be safe. But that unfortunately is harder. I'm seeing governments say, well, that's too hard. Let's regulate the AI instead. And that unfortunately will have a very anti-competitive stifling effect. AI, artificial intelligence, has tons of good uses and a handful of negative use cases. Um, to me, I often approach this by asking myself, do you think we're better off if there's more intelligence out in the world, be it human intelligence or in this case, artificial intelligence? And yes, intelligence can be used for nefarious purposes. I worry about large-scale disinformation. Um, I think that AI being used to generate you know, political deepfakes could be a, could be a problem. Um, and I think that it is true that intelligence can be used for bad purposes. I also think that society has largely advanced by people becoming smarter and getting more educated. So I think more intelligence is a good thing. And then having us think about what are the applications that, that, that are things we don't want and to guard against or to regulate against that, I think that would be a very constructive thing, but not to regulate intelligence or to slow down the rise of intelligence itself. When the new waves of technology um, 
sometimes large incumbent companies will do well, but it also creates a lot of opportunities for new entrants and startups. And I think investors play a key role in supporting and allocating capital and even supporting in more active ways, especially the entrepreneurial community. You know, I think uh, just to make an analogy, with the rise of the internet, some incumbents did really well. Uh, I think Apple and Microsoft were not internet companies, then they did really well. And then some startups of the time, including, you know, Google and Facebook Meta and Amazon were startups that wound up doing really well. I think with AI too, I think some incumbents would do just fine and that's okay, but there'll also be lots of startups that'll do really well. We are a venture studio, meaning that we don't just invest in startups, we um, actively work with the entrepreneurs to build the startups. So we end up building one startup per month. Um, and I think that the community more broadly of investors and builders, this is going after a lot of new opportunities that many incumbents, for whatever reason, are not doing so or not able to do so effectively. And net -net, I think this will create a lot of value um, to get a lot of new exciting applications built and, and made available to people. One of the tricky things about AI is, is a general purpose technology, meaning it's useful for tons of different applications. So um, I find myself simultaneously excited about the application of AI to healthcare and improving that, AI to education and logistics and financial services and on and on and on. In fact, I find it difficult to think of a sector that AI will not have a meaningful impact on. And, and, and frankly, I think all knowledge workers today, I think can get a productivity boost, like right now, uh, using gens of AI. And, but it still will take time and work to identify the specific applications. Um, is it helping with patient scheduling? Is it uh, giving people better financial advice? Um, is it giving people personalized educational coaches? All those specific applications, many of them still need to be fleshed out and then, and then built. And I think startups, as well as incumbent companies, will, will all play an important role in this. Now, I really respect the DOJ. I think DOJ, rule of law, I mean, justice, it's, so, it's, it's precious full of democracy, so I just feel that way. And, I, and, and then there's just the details that sometimes I wonder about. Um, yeah. Um, maybe, <clears throat> you know, I think, <clears throat> um, right, for America to be competitive, I think startups are a critical part of our ecosystem. Um, I'm really encouraged to hear about you know, people of a government working to promote competition. And one thing that worries me a little bit is uh, um, the stifling of acquisitions. And I know that acquisitions sometimes can be anti-competitive, but when, for example, the acquisition of Figma was, was blocked, um, and I think uh, there was a fashion deal that was also blocked, this actually has a chilling effect um, across Silicon Valley. And then the lack of access to liquidity it makes it more difficult for many investors to keep on investing and keep on powering this engine of American innovation. So clearly antitrust is important um, and not all acquisitions are pro-competitive, but I do worry at this moment in time if we are um, leaning a little bit too aggressively um, into, into blocking you know, acquisition types of transactions and if ultimately that would damage the entrepreneurial ecosystem. I feel like um, government has an important role to play um, uh, when it comes to antitrust, but I think it should be a, but we should be careful about taking a balanced approach and having an analysis of what is actually pro-competition and what is not.